Welcome to the If We Knew Then podcast. I'm Stephen Sox. And I'm Lori Sox. Today we are once again joined by Melissa Kynock via Skype from Birmingham, England. You may have seen Melissa in the BBC documentary series Life and Birth, and what moved us most, along with millions of the show's fans, were her positive attitudes and exuberance during her pregnancy with her son Bertie. Well, she's back with us, and we couldn't be more pleased. Melissa, thank you so much for joining us again on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for for having me. Yeah, thanks so much. The last time we talked to you, we discussed the show and your story, and you briefly mentioned your Down Syndrome-themed baby shower, which Lori and I totally loved. And I want to make that a thing. Yes. So please, tell us more about that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was such good fun. It was such good fun. I just... Um, I thought, you know, people, I, I, I knew I was going to need help from people. I was going to need everybody to be educated and on board. Um, and this is probably the best way. And and I think probably what my biggest fear was when I when I found out that Bertie was, had got Down syndrome, I think my biggest fear was, is it going to be ostracized by other people? Not because they're mean. But because we get embarrassed over silly little things, you know, or we get a little bit fearful. And and I completely relate to that. I'd, I have never spent time with anybody that's got any kind of disability at all. I worry about understanding people. Um, I worry about communicating with people. So you put somebody who um, so has got Down syndrome, I can feel... I, Am I going to be embarrassed? Am I going to embarrass them? You know, it's not because I'm mean. It's not because I've got any prejudices. It's just a situation I'm not used to. I'm not used to it. I'm uneducated. So if I feel like that, you know, are my friends and my family going to feel like that? And I don't want them to feel anything different about Bertie or for them to be uncomfortable. Like they, you know, they don't with Day, and I don't want them to be with Bertie. So that's my responsibility to help educate them and say, look, well, you know, we'll all learn together. And I think that's that's what I wanted to achieve with my baby shower. And I, and I think that's it. Looks like I achieved that. I mean, I don't think anybody um, feels remotely uncomfortable about it or talking to me about it or, or asking questions. I just wanted everything to be very open. So did you just? make information available did you how, how did you play a game I think this is a great thing and I love that it's just a celebration I'm just I'm curious because I think it's such a beautiful I think it's beautiful because I feel like sometimes with our kids that that right to celebrate is taken away you know other things are put there for us and I would love for every mom when they received the news to say, hey, I know what the theme of my baby shower might be. You know, how do they execute that? What did you do? I had a lot of balloons from the Down Syndrome Association. So I had great big balloon arches and helium filled balloons. My sister brought a massive silver 21 um, helium filled balloon. I had um, posters up. Um, I had um, printouts of uh, Makaton signing. Um, the, the Down Syndrome Association were fantastic. They sent me lots of stuff. They sent me um, badges and key rings uh, that I was able to, to give out. So I um, got little blue flowers and um, attached all those that did like scrolls and rolled them all up little packs for everybody to take home. Um, and the, the, the Down Syndrome Association here actually do leaflets and pamphlets for family members. So I was able to include that. So it was really about 
being together, um, getting it out in the open so nobody could be embarrassed about anything, um, and passing on information and lots of games for the for the kids to play in a bouncy castle and my friend cooked the most amazing curry and it was just really about us all being being together and starting to introduce people to something that there was going to be a big part of my of my life and the, uh, and you know my family's life now something else we didn't embellish on during our last meeting was the time Bertie spent in the hospital and his overall health right now and is is that something that you would be willing to share with us? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no problem. Um, he uh, he had his so Bertie was uh, diagnosed with a complete AVSD. He had his heart repair on the twenty second of January, and that went the the surgery went well. The holes are, are repaired. So that was fantastic. We all always knew that there. Were, would be a possibility that the valves would still leak um, so that was no surprise there I hoped that they would just be a mild leak on on both sides but um, he has a more moderate leak on the one side which hopefully the best case scenario is his body as he grows and and gets stronger his body will adapt to the type of heart that he's got and he won't need further surgery or uh, if it doesn't or it gets worse, then they'll replace the valve. So that will be um, second open heart surgery. And he was in hospital for a long time with that, nine weeks. He was in, that was nine, yeah, and that stay was nine weeks. And he just, I think it's very common for babies with Down syndrome, just couldn't get off that last dribble of, of oxygen. Um, but he he did very well. He also had um, bowel surgery a couple of weeks after his heart surgery. He was tested for Hirschsprung's when he was about five weeks old, which it came back negative. But his specialist, um, that was also with he, somebody that Bertie is under as well, is a consultant for his bowel. And he thinks that it's maybe it's more of a low set Hirschsprung's, so he can't really rule it out. Um, so, so it's it's not um, it's not severe, it's not major. Uh, he needs to have suppositories, um, otherwise, you know, he can't he can't poo. He's constipated without the suppositories, but it's not it's not hugely drastic. So he had a, li- a little procedure on his bowel, which didn't really work. When it didn't work, so we'll have a look again at, at that in a few months' time. But th- this. The surgeon didn't want to do anything drastic so soon after his heart surgery and with him being so small. But he really has just gone from strength to strength. I mean, clinically, he's very well. He looks very well. He's growing nice. He's gaining weight. I'm I'm weaning him. Uh, he tends to spit everything out. I don't think... Uh, I think he can swallow. I don't think he has a problem with swallowing. He just prefers to spit it. That's a lot more fun. So it would just practice practice with the solids but he's doing he's doing very 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 well I'm very happy with um with how his his health is and I'm I'm really not too concerned about um the heart valve I just I just don't think it's something worth worrying about I can't change anything I don't want to rob us of of any time now uh, in between if there is more surgery in between surgeries so we, we, I'm just we're just enjoying some normality and um, i will worry about that if we need to so uh, he, he, yeah health wise i think he's doing really really well you mentioned avsd and for those who maybe don't know about it can you can you define what avsd is I, i've got to say this right now atrioventricular septal defect <laughs> if i said that right so basically he had the, the 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 heart is the four chambers, so the top two chambers, the hole there was so large that it was literally one chamber. And then the hole in the bottom two chambers was very large, but not as big as the top one. And then rather than have two working valves, which act as gates, 
um, for the blood flow. There was just sort of one flat leaky valve. So they had to close the holes. They had to patch those up. And then out of the one valve, try and create two working valves. And I always knew that that was going to be the most difficult part of the surgery and that they would never be able to make two fully functioning valves that they would always have some leakage. It was just uh, depending on how much how much that was. So unfortunately, it's a little bit more than, than what we'd hoped for on the one valve. And did you find out about this before or after Bertie was born? I knew everything by 14 weeks pregnant. Okay. Yeah, everything um, everything very, very early on. And his his heart was the size of a um, grains of rice, and they detected his heart condition. Incredible. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. And when, how old was he when he had the surgery? Um, so it was January, so October, November, December, January. It was, it was just over three months old, like, yeah, three, four months old. And you mentioned normality. Um, how are you doing with, I know that's that's a lot for him to be born and to be in the NICU for so long and to now have two surgeries under your belt. And I know that that is definitely a concern uh, for parents with uh, who are pregnant with children with Down syndrome. That's one of the, the main concerns that they definitely put in your mind uh, when you're pregnant. How, how are you doing? I, I we and I, I'm good, you know. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with all the health stuff. I think um, that was frightened me when I was pregnant because there's just these long lists of um, very frightening uh, diagnoses that he could have. Um, but right now, um, you know, it's it's fine. I think probably what you don't know because it didn't show in the um, in the episode is so. I mean, you know that um, Bertie's dad wasn't involved at the time, uh, um, but Richard kept in in loose contact with me throughout my my pregnancy. Kind of um, was back and backwards and forwards, not really knowing what he, what he wanted. And I have to I have to stress, it's nothing to do with um, Bertie ha- having Down syndrome. In fact, Richard was. Um, when I told Richard of Bertie's diagnosis, Richard was like, well, well, that's not a problem. Richard was always concerned about um, Bertie's heart condition. I think he was just frightened that he wouldn't survive because of his heart condition. But the reason why Richard wasn't involved um, whilst I had nothing to do with Bertie is just Richard was not in and didn't want to be in a relationship with me. You know, he didn't <laughs> he didn't choose. Bertie was unplanned. He didn't choose to have a you know a baby with me. So he wasn't around to um, to begin with. And then he met Bertie back in um, early December, and um, just completely and utterly fell in love with his son. Um, completely devoted to him so this last big stint in hospital with Bertie's um, heart surgery Richard was involved in and um, in fact he hasn't left Bertie's side since Richard lived down by London um, didn't live here and I just knew I knew that he he wouldn't be going back to London he can't bear to be away from him so since Bertie was admitted to hospital on the 9th of January Richard really hasn't left his, his side. He's relocated here. And, uh, yeah, nearly we all live together. We all live together now. We're not in a relationship, but we're co-parenting. And he adores Day. He's always um, he's always loved Day. Day has always loved him, probably because they're both on the same emotional level, <laughs> same, <laughs> same, same mentality. Uh, so it's I don't have huge issues with Bertie's health now because I have this help with Richard and he's a fantastic, fantastic hands-on dad. He's really, really capable, very, very capable father. So in my life now, compared to what it was in in our long NICU stay, this is a breeze because I, I have this help. Yeah, so I'm I'm good. I'm emotionally this is the happiest I've ever been this is the most content that I've ever been it's probably the most grounded I've ever I've ever felt you know I think my life is um is my life is really good I have a life that I really value I value it very much 
That's beautiful. Uh, speaking of Day, have you talked to Day about Bernie's diagnosis? And, and, and if you have, what did you say to him? I mean, yeah, I kind of, you know, I talked to him about it in, as in I don't not talk to him about it. I just talked to him about it like he understands what I'm I'm talking about, you know, and he... Um, he, he asks the, the odd question, um, but I don't think it, the questions are any different if Bertie didn't have Down syndrome. I did have a chat with him the other day because he came with me to the hospital um, for Bertie's heart scan yesterday and we drove past the parent accommodation where we stayed for so long and, and Dad remembered it all and I said to him, that's not normal for babies to have such a long stay in hospital. What we did was very special and we were very strong as a family to do that and it was very difficult for us. And I know it was very difficult for you not to be at home for such a long time because I want him to realise like, that he's really strong. What, what he put up with as a little boy is it's incredible. You know, he was fantastic. He, he, he's not where he wanted to be. He wanted to be at home, but he did really, really well. So, and, and I want him to know that, you know, it was extraordinary and not everybody experiences what, what he went through. But other than that, I mean, we just don't really make a big thing of it. And, uh, but he's very bright. He, he'll ask questions, but like I say, I don't think he asked any sort of questions that, um, you know, if Bertie didn't have Down syndrome. Um, Bertie's NG tube fed. I breastfeed him and he's tube fed. But I, my cousin's son uh, also has a, a heart condition. He has a rare um, blood condition as well. And he was fed with, through a tube. So Day was, had already seen that. That was nothing that was nothing new for him to see a baby with a, a tube out, you know, out of his nose. So he's just taken it all taking it all in his stride. Well, that's one thing about inclusion is that you get to see people in our community, all different kind of people. And you had said that you hadn't had an experience with someone with Down syndrome prior to uh, the diagnosis. You really hadn't spent time or heard much information about it, you know, in detail. And that's kind of where I see that we're moving and progressing as a society, inclusion of, of children of all disabilities in schools and in our community and not just brushing them to the side. And then, and then the next generation or, or even this generation gets to, to experience them and understand them. And then there's not this awkwardness and, and this, uh, this strange vernacular. I, I can hear the way you talk about Down syndrome. It's just beautifully said. And the way you're going to talk in your household is going to teach day the same thing. And it's, it's really beautiful. Isn't it amazing? Oh, it really is amazing. I, my my second cousin um, has Down syndrome, and I met her briefly when I was a kid. I mean, I don't really remember it. I must have been very young, and um, th- that was the only time that was the only time that I met her. And so that was the only contact that I'd ever had with anybody really who who had some s- sort of disability or learning need. Well, that's not what it's going to be like for day he will go to school with kids with with down syndrome or, or or kids with physical disabilities you know he'll i mean that's just fantastic and and i've what the other thing that i've re- sort of realized as well is that many of my friends are in the same position as i am that we didn't have that contact we didn't have that at school so there has been this separation that because of bertie all those barriers are broken down for them as well and for their children. And I just think that inclusion is fantastic. I mean, you know, Bert, he's, he's, he's changing the world. He really is. I, I think we're, I just think we're really blessed for where we live and, um, and the attitudes of, of, of schooling here. Bertie will go to mainstream school um, for, as much, for as long as that benefits him. I think that's fantastic. Melissa, can I ask why was it the only time you met your second cousin was once? I just think it's probably um, distance. It's not, not, it was my, my dad's cousin's daughter. And I mean, she's a lot older than me. I think she's in her 60s now. And um, dad didn't see a lot of, of the family. So um, it was just, that just wasn't really people at, 
part of my family that we that we mix with. They only really mixed with um, my mum's side. That's kind of the cousins that I grew up with. Was um, my mum's family and not so much my dad's family, unfortunately. Well, what a different time that she grew up in compared to what the time Bertie's going to grow up in when it comes to attitude toward Down syndrome. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, just incomparable, completely different, thank God. Mm-hmm. And just as a mom, you ha- you deal with the stresses and, and every day. You speak so beautifully about your peace and your groundedness. Can I just, can I ask you where that comes from? Yeah, sure. I am... Um... So uh, something else you weren't wasn't shown in the uh, in the episode is I'm also a recovering drug addict. So you guys I mean, over here, if you guys I'm in the program, you probably know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean here they're, they're quite clueless in in the UK, so they 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 don't know about twelve step fellowship. So yeah, I'm I'm um, a member of twelve step fellowship which I'm clean sober for, for over 12 years now. So, and I work a, a pretty, pretty stiff program. I, I have a sponsor, I have sponsees, um, I do meetings, I do service, I work my steps, you know, I'm uh, f- very connected with the fellowship and that's that way of life, that spiritual way of life has grounded me. And um, I would most definitely given me the outlook on life that I have. I am a different person um, because of that, and 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 I and that has that's how I can be positive about Bertie because it's taught me to be in the moment and and be bloody grateful. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's really beautiful, and and I think that that is is something that I hear when you talk is such a, such a focus really on just the beauty in life and really when it comes to the core what really matters whether it be you know getting through the NICU or medical challenges and just staying focused on on your son and not letting a diagnosis be in the forefront which I have to tell you I I wish there you know there were times during my uh, when Liam was first born uh, for the first couple years uh, that I, I wasn't so graceful and I think it's really, I think that's really beautiful. And I, I hope that going forward, every mother ha- has that, is, is, is given that support and, and that the focus, and I think it was just because the focus on Down syndrome, at least when Liam was born, though I know it's changing, was not a positive thing. And I think the more we get the message out there that it, it is. It's it's beautiful, and this is our our child, and every child has challenges. That um, that that starts to change the message, and I I had to ask you because you really have such a great you have such a great focus. It's such a gift. It's a it's a beautiful beautiful gift, and and your boys are so fortunate to have that as part of their their foundation. Thank you. I think I think it's criminal to rob a woman of any joy of her pregnancy. That's, it's wrong. And I, was, I wasn't going to let anybody do that to me because I, I knew that I wasn't going to get to do this again. And I was so excited, so, so excited, so blessed to have both the boys. Something I wanted so badly that I wasn't going to let anybody rob me of a moment of joy and excitement, you know. And uh, and I think it's wrong for anybody to do that to a mom um, because of some stupid diagnosis. Because the diagnosis doesn't make the person, does it? No, it doesn't. And no. I have to tell you, we're just smiling over here. Just listen <laughs> to you, just smiling. It's, it's it's wonderful. Is there something that you'd like to maybe tell parents, uh, parents that find out that their their child has Down syndrome? Anything that you'd like to personally say to them? It's going to be okay. It's you know, it's going to be okay. I think um, I I always want to be very careful. On I mean, I don't like the word advice anyway. Um, but very careful with trying to shut down people's feelings because I I did have that a fair bit during my pregnancy and it's um, best intentions. People um, 
want to take away any painful feelings. But the right thing to do is just to allow somebody to feel the feelings and just experience them. And that's their fear and that's their anxiety. And not to minimise it or shut it down, and but to just listen. And I, a lot of the time I didn't feel heard. People, as I say, it's people with the best intentions, but they just wanted to kind of take away take away the feelings. And it was just a journey that I needed to go on. So my suggestion to anybody who is having any difficulty with their, with their pregnancy is find somebody you can talk to. Find somebody who's going to really, really listen to you. I'm, I am really blessed that I have this fantastic support network of, of these my my sponsorship family in my in my fellowship that have really helped me and my my sponsor in particular is she doesn't try and shut down my feelings she allows me to experience them she allows me to experience all the the the, the fear and and get it all out and then she puts some perspective on it for me and just brings me back into reality you know and I've got that and and not everybody has that so my suggestion would be is, find that and it may be that you have to pay for it you may have to pay for a really good therapist a really good counsellor that you could just sit and vent and offload because just look being pregnant is scary anyway being pregnant at, at 41 44 my biggest fear is I would lose my baby because of my age you know and, I, and rather than people just say no 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 you'll be fine I thought I'm not being hurt you know and it's just so important to have that that outlet and and one of the that I, I had that I was very lucky and another big huge massive thing that I had that helped me and I didn't get it until I think Bertie was maybe oh five days old six days old but thankfully right right at the beginning of um, of, of having Bertie I was we'd been readmitted to the hospital Day three, he came home the day after he was born, and then the day after that, we were readmitted it again. And I was on the ward, and one of the nurses handed me a book, and it was um, by this this group that I spoke about earlier. Wouldn't change a thing. And this book is photographs of families who are living life with Down syndrome. And the focus of the book is to change negative perceptions of people with Down syndrome. And oh my word, they nailed it. It's beautiful. I thought that Bertie would um, be have all of these health issues and that maybe, maybe on the outside chance, he he might be able to do some of the things that maybe Day would be able to do. And this book showed me that Bertie, hopefully, will be able to do many, many different things. He will have a fulfilled life, you know. And I was so, so emotional about reading this book. It was it's the, one of the most beautiful things and it came to me uh, you know thank god it came right early on with with Bertie it would have been really nice to have had it when I was pregnant because I would rather have read that than a lot of the stuff that I you know read on on the on the internet but it was just a really really beautiful book and that's what I would recommend parents to get is something like that rather than the things that you read on the on the internet and I think I'm we have to be careful with saying, um, you know, don't worry, your child will do that. You know, they will go to school or they will walk. Or, well, you know, he, Bertie might not. There might be things that Bertie can't do. And um, and that's all right. You know, that's if Bertie um, is never able to control his bowels, you know, that's all right. If Bertie is always going to be tube fed, that's all right. If Bertie will only ever be able to communicate non-verbally, that's okay. If Bertie never walks, that's okay. You know, if he can't do gymnastics, that's okay. It doesn't matter what he can and can't do because we love him. He loves us and we'll have a fantastic, fulfilled life. So I think... I just I wouldn't want to give anybody advice, but those are the those are the suggestions that have that have worked for me and um, and keep me happy and keep me um, grounded. Yeah, I don't know whether any of that made any sense. <laughs> totally made sense. I'm glad you mentioned the book 
from Wouldn't Change a Thing because, first of all, WCAT Wouldn't Change a Thing has been a great supporter of this podcast and of our films in the past through the Disability Film Challenge. They've always promoted us on their Facebook and Twitter pages, um, but they are such a positive and supportive group. This parent-led organization sells this incredible book on their website, and I'm going to put the link in the show notes, but Wouldn't Change a Thing is so amazing that they will send this book at no charge to any expectant parent of a child with Down syndrome as well as relevant health professionals. Just contact them, and I'll, I'll put their email address as well in the show notes, but it's wcatbook at gmail.com. And, and Melissa, I want to say I hope that we didn't shut you down when we said about Bertie being able to communicate. Not, not at all, not at all. And do you know what, what you guys uh, um, give and what – what was different when I met other families that have got children with Down syndrome, what they showed me was your life will feel normal. And that was really important to me. It will feel normal because that's, that's your, it's your new normal, isn't it? Having a child with Down syndrome is your new normal and it will feel normal. It's the same as, you know, with your other children. And it was, I never felt, I certainly didn't feel shut down by you guys, not not at all. And I never felt shut down by them. It was more kind of maybe, you know, good intentions of some friends and, and family that wanted to make me feel better, um, but didn't hear me. But you guys have got nothing to worry about. No, 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 you mustn't apologise. <laughs> It don't change anything that you do either. <laughs> no, but I think I learned from you that, you know, the truth is, is that even though I want to put someone at ease, I think it's very important for them to ex be able to express, to express that fear. It, it's a great point. It's, it's a, a great really point great to, point. And to keep I am, in mind for anyone when they're talking, to, ever. even if they're a parent with a child with Down syndrome, just as they go to inform someone to let them go through their emotions, because that's like you said, it's very important because nobody can do that for you. I thank you for that insight. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a pleasure. And with that in mind, uh, you know, our podcast is called If We Knew Then, and we kind of end most episodes with an, an If I Knew Then statement. Is there something that particularly that you could point out that you wish you knew then that you know now that would have put yourself in a better position to not have some fears? One thing, and it's such a big thing for me, is that oh, I just wanted to know that life was going to be normal, and it is. <laughs> it, it is. It doesn't feel on a minute-to-minute, day-by-day, you know, hour-to-hour, hour, that we're living this life filled of angst, waiting for health issues or um, what Bertie, to see what Bertie can or can't do or how he, he will develop. It's, that's not my life. My life does not look like that. My life is normal. It's about feeding and nappies and and screaming at day to clean his teeth. And, you know, it's normal. And that's, I'd like to have known that then. Yeah, that it would just be normal. Well, we are so blessed to have been able to talk to you again. Uh, it's really been so wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for asking me. I was, of course, still quite blown away. Thank you. I look forward to this new friendship. I I, yeah. I, I love your insight and I, I love your attitude. And uh, I want to thank you for, for sharing that with us because, whoa, it's really uplifting. And I think it's inspiring um, just to hear just to hear that. I'm interested in your story in the future with and Bertie and, and what, what he's going to do and, and, and all the things that he will do. Uh, he's uh, he's gonna shake things up. He's 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 got a twinkle in his eye. That one, he definitely has. <laughs> I think what you guys do is incredible. You know, he's so proactive. Well, thank you. You're very impressive as a human being, Melissa, and it's such a it's a, such a gift to meet you and get to talk with you. And I think for me, uh, I go back to when Liam was born and how we felt when we got the news. And even though still, I, I'd like to say I had, I think I had your attitude, but I, I would like to, in reality, think I had just a portion of it in me as far as this is my journey and it's not going to rock me and still being rocked. I think that if I would have heard your voice and your story and your attitude, that that would have been 
the little piece that I needed to say, like you wanted, this is going to be normal. This is our life and we're good. There's, there's some hope and there, and there's light. And I'm so glad that we can put your voice out there for people to hear because you're such a nice light. It's yes, really thank a you beautiful, so much, beautiful Melissa. light. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you. You're very, very kind. Thank you very much. My, my my friends and family would completely disagree and say I'm a, I'm a pain in the bum. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's what they're there for, right? <laughs> and I thank you for giving up your mommy time at the end, at the end of the day because I know that is precious. Uh, I thank you for for your time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you very much for this. It's uh, it's been great. And um, please keep in touch. Please follow us on Twitter at If We Knew Then Pod. And you can drop us a line on our Facebook page at If We Knew Then Pod. Or visit our website, ifweknewthen.com, to send us an email with questions and comments. And you can join our mailing list there and get alerts of future podcast episodes. All these links will be added to this episode's show notes. Thank you again, and we look forward to you joining us on the next episode of If We Knew Then. Thank mm-hmm. you.